Oh, there you are, YouTube. Do, 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 do. Subscribe if you're interested, but also no pressure. Hey, uh, the Oscars are tomorrow. By the time you're reading this, or reading this, watching this, the Oscars are probably tonight, unless you see it even later. But uh, what we're going to do today is play a little game of if I had a ballot, if I were in... Uh, an Academy member, how would I rank the best picture winners on my ballot? So I actually haven't done this beforehand, so I don't know where this is going to go. We're going to try and work it out here in this video together. So what do you say? Should we uh, rank these best picture nominees? Did I say winners earlier? I meant nominees. We're going to, we are going to rank the best picture nominees for this season's Oscar. So we have in alphabetical order right now, American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, and then The Zone of Interest. So I think we'll, I'm going to try to start with the bottom and then work my way up to the top. I think I know I know the bot. I know the, the the last one. I know the last one. Then the rest. I don't even know if I know my favorite film. I, I, I don't think I. I don't think I know my favorite film. But okay, here we go. Can you see this? Okay, does all this look fine? How's that? Is that better or worse? Oh my goodness, my chair is knocking stuff over. I think that looks pretty good, right? Okay, so um, I know Zone of Interest is not last. I really did like that movie but I don't know if it's gonna be I don't know I don't know where it's gonna be yet but I do know unfortunately for Maestro sorry Bradley Cooper now Bradley Cooper I think you know everything you did with A Star Is Born was great I would have been cool A Star Is Born winning Best Picture um, you should have been nominated for Best Director and I think you should have maybe won Best Actor but here this time, the makeup is the standout. I love the makeup here in Maestro, like when, especially when he's older, not in every scene, but when he's playing the older vi version of that fellow, my goodness, it's some of the best makeup I've ever seen. It truly is. So Maestro, I'm going to put down here. Now things get difficult because I pretty much love every other movie. So I gotta, I gotta find a way to rank these. Um, Right now, I'm thinking, I know it's not Poor Things, so let's move that one just up in that empty spot. I know it's also not Zone of Interest either, so we'll leave that there. I'm thinking it could be, you know, it might be American Fiction because of the ending. I still don't know how I feel about the ending. I loved the first portion of the movie, and then as it kept going... Um, there, I don't know. I, I wasn't as into it, but also I loved the beginning so much that when things started to feel different than the beginning, I was caring for it less. Um, so I'm going to put American fiction here for right now. Uh, now Jeffrey Wright stars in it. I am so happy he got a best actor nomination. He's one of my favorite actors, but I think I might unfortunately have to put that one down there. For right now and uh, right here past lives actually feels pretty good right there I did enjoy that movie um, I think it's a really cool nomination because it's kind of this like love story sort of thing but unconventional in that um, it's not just like you know we have a meet cute and then uh, we spend time together and then we have a rough patch and then we end up together at the end you know it's not that sort of thing um, it's, it's done really well and in a very modern way because a big chunk of the relationship is sort of online, which is, is cool. So it, it shows also the era in which we live in, but I really did like past lives, but I might keep that one down here for right now. Cause even though I loved it, um, it's just a little milder, I guess a milder film than some of the other ones in the way I feel about it. So, um, Gosh, okay, so next we have, you know what, I might go, Barbie was a lot of fun, but the Will Ferrell stuff honestly put such a bad taste in my mouth. I just think they should have hired somebody else. I don't know who they should have hired, but the Will Ferrell stuff just 
one that was like the real world and he was like such a cartoon he was like more cartoony than people in barbie world but i i think they were probably trying to say something about you know capitalism and and corporations and things like that but i don't know the will ferrell just was kind of irritating and when it comes to him um his character i should say <laughs> not will ferrell himself but when it comes to his character sometimes i really like them sometimes i really don't and a lot of times it has to do with the volume of them how loud they are but that's not always the case because i really love elf but really, like, unfortunately, like, when I think of Barbie, a lot of times I think of Will Ferrell and thinking, like, ah, gosh, I just wish they would have hired someone else or Will Ferrell had played it a little differently. So I'm going to put that here for right now. Love Margot Robbie. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the music's really great in it. My kids love the music. We listen to the, the, set, the soundtrack all the time. Um, so, yeah, I like Barbie. Again, really, Maestro's the only one I didn't really care for um, to a, a point where I would say I, I wasn't into it. The rest, you know, I was into to a degree. Okay, so we got Barbie here, and then we got Oppenheimer, Anatomy of a Fall. So here's the other question. When we're, when we're talking about ranking these, I try to do a blend of deserves and what I want to win. So normally on Oscar night, I have a few sheets of paper with me. I have uh, who I think deserves to win and also who I want to win and I filled these out. And then um, I fill out who I think will win. And then uh, I also have a sheet of paper for who does win. <laughs> so I have these four sheets of paper in front of me. Um, and and I'm basically I'm trying to blend the for right now for this I'm trying to blend the deserves and the want right I think that's what I'm trying to do so next we have um, again I really love a lot of these I, mean, I don't even I still don't know what my number one is but you know I might I might put the holdovers I don't know. I'm just gonna do this for a moment. This may change. I really, I Paul Giamatti, one of my favorite actors. Also, Paul Giamatti is in The Holdovers, and uh, Jeffrey Wright is in American Fiction, and they are in the movie Lady in the Water together. One of my favorite M Night Shyamalan movies, which a lot of people have not seen or they do not like. Maybe give it another shot. If you don't like it, maybe give it a try if you haven't seen it. So I'm gonna put the holdovers here. I really like the 70s aesthetic um, that it has, you know, the filmmaking style, uh, the zooms and things like that. Paul Giamatti's doing great work. Um, Divine is doing great work. It's just, I think it's great work all around and I, I do like that movie. Uh, but you know, it's also a little milder, but it's also a Christmas movie. So I'll be watching that movie probably quite a bit. I don't own it yet. I would like to own it. Maybe it'll hit 4K or something. So I'm gonna put the holdovers here for right now. And I'm just, I might put this here just for, to put it here. Okay, Killers of the Flower Moon, Poor Things. Um, so Poor Things, actually, this these I just reviewed this one the other day and there were a couple things I wanted to talk about. Um, one of them being Willem Dafoe at the end, I'm gonna spoil some things here on Poor, poor Things. So Willem Dafoe, he um, dies at the end of the movie. Did you think that maybe um, Bella was going to transplant his brain into uh, her ex-husband or whatever, his body? Did you think that was gonna happen? I was curious if that was going to happen because she didn't have too strong attachments to that ex-husband's body because she didn't really know it. Her herself didn't know it. Um, so I, I think it could have been a transition that could have been made. But obviously she didn't do that. But did, did that come into your mind for a moment? I think that would have maybe ruined the thesis of the movie. But that's another, I guess, nitpick I have with the movie is that sort of the thesis about like male's desire to own and um, male ownership and stuff like that was pretty heavy-handed throughout the movie like it was just obvious that was like one of the main themes in the movie but then 
like she even says it out loud. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> like, you know, I think we all got what the movie, you know, what a portion of it was about. I don't know if he, if it needed to be said <laughs> out loud. So, um, I don't know. That's like a little nitpick I guess I have with the movie. Tiny, tiny stuff, tiny. One, I wish Willem Dafoe, would have, his brain would have been transplanted, but again, that would have ruined the thesis of the movie, I think, because then she would have been sort of doing ownership sort of thing um, in a way. But, you know, had Willem Dafoe woken up as a younger body, able to see his daughter grow up, or grow even further and become more intelligent, I think I think he would have liked that and follow in, in his footsteps. I think he would have liked that. So, I don't know. I think that would have been cool. I wish that's what would have happened. But, you know, that's like me rewriting the script. But then the other thing, um, yeah, just kind of like saying what the movie is about out loud seemed extra heavy-handed, even though the movie kind of already was. But, um, yeah, still like that movie. My wife did not like that movie. <laughs> So I'm going to put this here for now. And I think Killers of the Flower Moon I put, might put here. And maybe, I don't know. Killers of the Flower Moon. Like, when I think of that movie, I think of Robert De Niro and how great he did. He was so good in it. So I don't know. These are kind of, I don't know yet. Um, Gosh, I don't know. Let's Actually, let's look at this. Z let's consider Zone of Interest number one. Very powerful film. Um, also that the ending, uh, was, was really strong also because the whole time, what's his name, Hoff and his family, they're, they're going about their business in unique ways. You have the wife who's just completely ignoring what's going on. And then you have the kids who are listening in, um, and then being influenced by what they're hearing going on. And then you have the husband who or sorry the grandma who's hearing what's going on just outside across the walls and she's horrified and can't stay there and then you have the dad who is like uh also ignoring it i don't know but he's you know he's the one that's doing it carrying it out right and it's interesting because the way he is going about it it's so so like machine like where i think the 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 wife is sort of kind of like a i'm just going to act like i'm not hearing it so that i can carry on with this nice life like you know wealthy house and uh, nice house wealth and all that stuff but the husband i think he's blocking it out so that he can just kind of straight you know, would work. And that's where I think that end was really interesting when he's at that party and he's getting congratulated and everything for what he's doing. And then when he's leaving, when he, spoilers, throws up, it like finally hits him, everything that he is responsible for, right? Kind of seems that way. And he's like realizing maybe, oh, what have I done? Maybe I'm reading that wrong, but that's sort of how I read it. Um, so yeah, great, powerful movie. And then Anatomy of a Fall, I really like that one. Um, Kind of a genre sort of story crime thriller courtroom sort of movie uh that was really good that's like the type of stuff my wife and i like to watch oppenheimer's really good uh obviously um yeah i mean that's a strong one all the way through so i don't know i i'm wondering if this is my ranking zone of interest Anatomy of a Fall, Oppenheimer, Killers, Poor Things. I wish Poor Things could be higher, because I love how artsy it is. Maybe it could be. Oh, no, actually, I almost put Poor Things higher, but Killers of the Flower Moon, that ending with Martin Scorsese, that was, like, that was, uh, I don't know, that was a really strong ending, I thought. I thought that was, uh, when... Scorsese comes out there and, and reads. That was, wow. I don't know. I just found it a, a, a great way to a cap the film. I guess that wasn't the full cap, but uh, to, to end it. I, I don't know. I, I thought that was interesting and, and really good. Um, I kind of want to put Past Lives above Barbie because I don't really have any problems with 
past lives, but I do Barbie. But I don't know, my problem with Barbie is so minimal. So maybe, maybe I'll do that. And honestly, I could put past lives above the holdovers, but I just love Paul Giamatti so much. And I'm thinking past lives. I mean, both of them are kind of mild, mild movies. Mild, like, you know, not saying they're bad or mid. Just they're mild, you know, stake, low stakes, lower stakes sort of thing. Um, Zone of Interest number one? That was really good. Oppenheimer is really good. A lot of great actors in Oppenheimer. A lot of supporting cast. Krumholtz. Um, old uh, Josh Hartnett. RDJ. Albert Einstein. Man. I don't know. Really, honestly, I have a tough... I'm having a tough thing with Poor Things to Zone. I don't think I could put Poor Things at number one. And I couldn't put Killers at number one either. But I could put any of these three at number one. So it's let's separate it sort of into chunks. So for me, it's Zone of Interest, Anatomy of a Fall, and Oppenheimer are all... All could be number one. All could be number one. And then it's sort of... Um, then I think I, there's kind of a, a grouping right here of killers, poor things, holdovers, and past lives sort of mixed together. But here's the thing, like, I do have a couple issues with Killers of the Flower Moon, uh, a couple issues with poor things. I don't think I have any issues with holdovers, and I don't think I have any with past lives, which is kind of interesting, but maybe I find these more ambitious. So that's why I have them higher up. So that could be the, that could be why I'm doing that. And then Barbie, I don't know, maybe I just don't, maybe because it's a toy, it's like less of a serious movie. The Will Ferrell stuff, the Will Ferrell sequences just kind of felt like Spice World to me. Nothing against Spice World, I watched it too. But it just, I don't know, felt less serious. American Fiction, um... I, I loved the beginning of it. It was really making me think of one of my favorite movies of all time, Sideways. And then it sort of shifted away from that. And then the ending. I mean, it made me laugh. My wife and I were laughing a lot. But I don't know. The, the ending, I just... I don't know how I felt about that. Maybe I'll regret putting it so low because maybe, you know, a week or two from now, I might be like, ah, yeah, that ending was really great. But right now, I'm still questioning the ending and feeling like I didn't like it. Feeling like I didn't like the ending. So I'm going to put that maybe down low. And then Maestro at the bottom, I guess. I don't know. I feel bad for having Barbie so low too. Because my kids are really into Barbie. I like I like watching it with them. Um, it's just that, I don't know, that stuff towards the end with Will Ferrell. Just like was like, eh, eh, not into it. I think this might be what I do. It's not a list I feel confident with. Again, Maestro's the only one I really had zero connection to. All the others, I did. So it's like, uh, I wish it were, well, I don't know. <laughs> if it were nine, I really wouldn't know what to do. This is the only one I feel confident in, truly. This is the only one where I'm like, yeah, that's where that goes. At the bottom. The rest, I don't know. These three, I think, are the best and I would love for any of them to win Best Picture, and I think Oppenheimer's going to. So th I think this is going to be my list. I think this is going to be it. One I don't feel confident in, but... The zone, okay, yeah, I think I'm going to go... I think I'm... Okay, I don't know. I'm wanting to switch it. What if I put Oppenheimer higher? The music in Oppenheimer is amazing. Plus, it's just so grand and large. Oh, I think another, maybe the reason I'm putting Oppenheimer at three <clears throat> is I don't like uh, biopics when they are named after the, the, the subject because 
uh, I don't know, I like a more poetic, I like a more poetic uh, title. I just prefer that. But also, biopics winning Best Picture are is weird to me. But that, Oppenheimer doesn't really feel like a biopic. It's not like, here's, here's the life and times of Oppenheimer, right? It's not like that. It's not like the greatest hits of his life. It really is a focused film. So I'm okay with it as a movie. I don't necessarily like the title. I wish its title was a little more uh, poetic. I think that would be nice. I like that just because that's, that's just something I, what a best picture to me should have a, a poetic title, shouldn't have a sort of um, biopic sort of title. I don't like that. Again, my my example is like Aaron Brockovich was nominated for Best Picture. Imagine if Aaron Brockovich won Best Picture. Then one of our Best Picture winners in the history of all of Oscars would be titled Aaron Brockovich. Who's that? Who's that? You know, it's like Tom Jones. I don't like, I mean, it's not a, not a biopic, but still, I don't like that title. Who's, who's Tom Jones? What's New Pussycat? That guy? It's not him, but, you know, that could be what people think. So I think this is what I'm going to go with. I don't feel comfortable with it at all, other than Maestro's placement. So Zone of Interest, Anatomy of a Fall, Oppenheimer. I don't know. I think I might put Oppenheimer at number two. Because of the ambition, I'm going to put... And Anatomy of a Fall, really good, but it's not, like, it's just more uh, extra high. I mean, Sandra Haller is really good in it. I mean, it's good. It's a great movie. The courtroom stuff's really awesome, too. I didn't even get into that. That stuff was great when I did my review. I really didn't talk about that enough. Like, her lawyer was uh, awesome. And the other lawyer was awesome, too. I mean, he wasn't making good points, but, like, the acting was great. But I think that one I, I was having higher just because it's like a genre the sort of that I enjoy, like the true crime sort of. It's not true crime, but like it has that vibe. So I think I am going to put Oppenheimer at number two because of that ambition. And what I like also about Zone of Interest is it is artsy as well. So it has this, it's a serious film, um, but also artsy like you have some these black and white scenes that are really unique you have some hopping around in the timeline a little bit uh which i think is great and um yeah so i think i like the artistry here um but the ambition of oppenheimer kind of makes me want to put it at number one here's the thing i think oppenheimer should win there we go i think oppenheimer should win but I think, no, oh gosh, I'm just thinking of the ending of Oppenheimer now too, because that was very affecting. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and put Zone of Interest at number one. Uh, or should Oppenheimer be number one? I mean, the end of Oppenheimer, like, uh, I mean, that like kind of destroyed me a little bit. This also, but I don't know what I'm thinking of Oppenheimer and how, like, it's like so ambitious and epic. It makes me want to put it number one. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say out loud, I think Oppenheimer should win, but I'm going to go ahead and put Zone of Interest here at number one because it's it's got an, an art, a unique artsiness to it, uh, sort of peppered in. I like that. Oppenheimer, the ambition, and it's the one I think should win. Um, Anatomy Fall great killers of flower moon also has i mean that's true crime right there uh and that one's very good um and now i'm also wondering if i should put killers ahead of anatomy of a fall mm. i might wow but here's the thing here's the thing why okay so I said this could win best picture and that would be cool why did I not say that about this because I think the problem is I start thinking of Scorsese and I shouldn't do this but I think of Scorsese's films and when I think of like his films I'm thinking of his best films of all time and I don't think this is one of his best films of all time but I shouldn't think about it that way I shouldn't judge this against other Scorsese films I need to judge it against these other films right here so I think I would think I was letting Scorsese's filmography jump in a little bit too much. 
so see right now my mind has like shifted into artsiness now it's shifted into artsiness because now I'm wondering see, now I'm uh, oddly I'm I feel like I want poor things above anatomy of fall but I want holdovers above poor things I should have quit <laughs> now I'm questioning too much Ah, uh, I'm having a tough time here. You know what? I might stop here because I'm at 25 minutes and, and I don't know what to do. Again, the only one I feel comfortable with is Maestro down here. That's the one I know. Not not for me. Sorry, Bradley Cooper. You should have you should have won earlier and the Academy should have recognized you. Um, best actor for for what you did in uh, Star is Born. Also, your directing was great. It was a great, great film also. Uh, that one should have won more. It was great. So I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Zone of Interest, Oppenheimer. It's now, now Killers of the Fire Moon doesn't feel right up here. But I don't think I'm going to switch it. And then Anatomy. Then Poor Things. I feel like Poor Things needs to be higher. Because I like also the science fiction nature of it. And now I'm wondering if Poor Things should be three. Okay, I'm just going to say I don't feel comfortable with any of this, <laughs> and I'm just going to leave it. Zone, Oppenheimer, Killers, Anatomy, Poor Things, The Holdovers, Past Lives, Barbie, American Fiction, Maestro. I think that's it. It's, I mean, it's not it. It's not. It's just the best I can do right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to myself. I'm angry with myself. I'm not going to be happy with this tomorrow. I'm not happy with it now. Um... But this, that's the best I can do. This is, I guess, what my uh, my ranking would look like if I had an Oscar ballot. And it's not a ranking I, I feel comfortable with. But um, I think, you know, with the, the tallying system and everything, Oppenheimer uh, would win. So my vote would help Oppenheimer get to the top. And uh, we know it's going to win tomorrow also. But anyway, I guess this is my ranking one more time. I don't approve of it, <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. How would you rank these movies? I'm curious. And is it difficult for you, or is there a clear, is this a clear, easy ranking for you? Because it's definitely not me. I'm having a tough time here, other with other than the one. I, I really, I would love to put really past lives and up. I would love to put all of these in the number one spot, I think. There's a reason for me to want to put them in the number one spot. Yeah. So, anyway, what do you think? Let me know. I'd love to know in the comments below what your thoughts are. And perhaps we'll see you tomorrow for more Pure Hangout.